Good morning. This is Friday, June 25th, and I welcome you today to Glimpses of Grace and Glory. And we're going to continue with our thought from yesterday. Yesterday, we presented that the Ten Commandments is now obsolete according to the Word of God and that we are saved by the grace of God alone through faith. Now, I know that's going to rattle a lot of people, and there's going to be people who will disagree, and they will fight that, just as the Jews did in Paul's day, the Judaizers. But you know, this is, God used the book of Galatians to open my eyes. I had been working at a church for 20 years, teaching Sunday school. Uh, I was the business manager for the office. I was the secretary of the board, and, and I was uh, editing all the sermons, doing all the publications, and I was lost. And God brought me to the place when I had, I, I ended up with no hope and knew I was just uh, going to be going to hell. But God showed me the book of Galatians verse by verse and opened up my eyes to his grace. And let me tell you, if you'll listen to yesterday's message, if there's confusion, we're going to continue this. So today we're going to look at the book of Galatians. We're going to look at, I was going to use chapter three today, but we're going to use chapter two today and tomorrow we'll use chapter three. So the Apostle Paul is making the case, and don't forget, he wrote 14 of the 27 books of the New Testament. God used him mildly. But he says in Galatians 2, we're going to read 15 down through 21. He says, you and I are Jews by birth. He's talking to his fellow Jews, not sinners like the Gentiles. So he just prefaced with that. But he went on to say in verse 16, yet we know that a person is made right with God, that is justified. King James uses justified. A person is justified, which means just if I had never sinned. No record at all. A person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ. By faith in Jesus Christ alone, period not by obeying the law, the, the law. And people say, oh, it's ceremonial law. But as we said yesterday, you don't obey the ceremonial law to be made right. Everybody, that, would be, that, that wouldn't even make sense. And yesterday we showed how the Bible says the law graven and stones on the mountain. That was the Ten Commandments. So when people try this little thing about it was the ceremonial law, they're ignoring the scripture and missing the whole point of the gospel from Genesis to Revelation. Sorry, but that's the truth of it. The law graven in stone up on the mount when Moses' face was shining was the Ten Commandments. So if you didn't catch yesterday, please listen. And we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. We're justified or made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we obeyed the law. For no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law. Does it get any clearer than this? How, how do we miss it? It shows the blindness. I was working in the church, teaching Sunday school, and for 20 years I missed this. How do we miss it? It was blindness. Just as the blindness <clears throat> came upon the Jews, it comes upon Christians today. <clears throat> now, he says in verse 17, but suppose we seek to be made right with God or justified through faith in Christ, and then we are found guilty because we have abandoned the law. Wow, you, you're not following the Ten Commandments. You, you abandon the law, you're guilty. Would that mean Christ has led us into sin? Absolutely not. Rather, verse 18, rather I am a sinner if I rebuild the old system of law I already tore down. So when you come to know Christ and faith in Christ alone, this, this was Jews because they had the law. They tore down that old system and they followed faith in Christ. If they go back to that, he says, now you're a, you're a sinner. Now you're a transgressor. Now, we Gentiles never had the law. We, don't, we didn't have to tear it down because we never had it. God never, ever, you can read the Bible, God never gave the law to Gentiles. It was given to the nation of Israel as a covenant. They were to be circumcised. They were to try to obey, they try to obey the law just to lead them to Christ. And we went over all that yesterday. So we didn't have to tear down anything. All we had to do is receive Christ. Gentiles just came and said, they heard about Christ, they received Christ. They never knew the commandments, never had them. So they're kind of at an advantage in one way because they didn't have to tear down anything. The, the Jew is standing there in tattered dirty clothes of legalism, just like, uh, just like Lazarus was when he came out of the grave. And what did Jesus say? Loose him. Take those grave crawlers off of him. They don't belong on a live person. We're alive in Christ. We don't have those. And also Joshua, the high priest, in Zechariah 3. 
So he's saying if you build the back, to go back under the law, you become a transgressor, a sinner, because you went back. And later on, he'll say that that's falling from grace. Verse 19 says, for when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. And that's what it did to me. I was in church six or seven times a week. I was working feverishly, trying to obey all the rules, and I was just condemned. And Paul says, for when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me, so I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God. And you'll never live for God when you're trying to keep the law. You'll always fall short. You'll always feel condemned. You'll never feel like you can be close to him because you're a transgressor. You can't draw near to him through the law. Nobody ever drew near to God through the law. He was, oh, holy God up there. And here we are struggling and knowing that he's going to hit us with his spiritual uh, correction stick, his fly swatter or whatever. And they never could have a relationship. It's only by grace you have a relationship. By receiving Christ, the seed of the Father, you become a child of God, accepted in the Beloved, righteous through Christ, and you have a great relationship with Daddy Father, Abba Father. Verse 20 says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And don't say because I have the Holy Spirit now I can keep the commandments because that's, they're at odds. It's either the law or the Spirit. <laughs> you can't say because I have the Spirit now God expects me to keep the Ten Commandments by the power of the Holy Spirit. You, you, you missed it all. I'm sorry. If that's what you feel, you need to pray that God will open your eyes because you really have blinders on just like the Jews did. Read the Bible and, and ask God to enlighten. So verse 21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. It's, it's so simple, brothers and sisters. If you're going to try to keep the command, and you know what we do? We treat, teach the little children in Sunday school, even when we know the grace of God, we teach them, Oh, God loves good little boys and girls. God is pleased when you obey and when you obey your parents and when you do good things. No. And then we have to undo all that when they get older. We need to start our children off right. God is pleased by faith in Jesus only. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. So you have to believe in Jesus. That pleases him. That belief in Christ and his spirit in us will lead to the good things. For by grace we're saved through faith, and not of ourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man boast. We are his workmanship. When Christ is in you, we're his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. All the good works are done by Jesus in us. So it doesn't mean when Christ is in you and you're saved by grace, you'll be this out and out sinner. You'll just love to do all the evil things. No, because you'll love God. Your motivation is a love for Christ but Christ in you guide you. This is not where you should be. This is not what you should do. You, you, you have a different love. You don't love those things anymore. You love Jesus. And the love of Christ constrains us, not exterior barriers. And, and uh, you know, the, the Ten Commandments is like a guardrail that keeps us on the road. No, it's not. It never kept anybody on the road. The Ten Commandments never kept anybody on the road. So that's, that's, that's not even truth. The Holy Spirit's Christ in you keeps you on the road. He lives through us and brings glory to the Father. Thank God so much. Lord Jesus, if there's anybody here that hasn't seen your full grace, the grace awakening, Lord, open up eyes and hearts to see that it's Jesus and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ alone, alone. We don't add to it. We don't marry the, the Ten Commandments and grace. The old is obsolete. We made that plain yesterday. The scriptures did. And the new way, the new and living way, the old way was a dead way, demanding death. The new and living way is Christ Jesus. We have access to you and call you Daddy Father, having boldness to enter into the holy of heaven, holy of holies in heaven. So Lord, just open up eyes and hearts. We praise you for your salvation by grace alone in Jesus' name. Amen.